Um, so I'm here to give you guys an update of what I've been doing over the past month, month and a half uh, with Archive Planner. Um, so just to give everyone a refresher, Archive Planner is it's a course scheduling tool similar to uh, RPI Scheduler, except for with RPI Planner, you're planning your entire plan of study at RPI, not just a single semester or anything for courses. So um, it, this uh, application is really just to help uh, students uh, fill out their plan of study and uh, really tailor uh, what they're going to be doing at RPI to, to the individual. Um, and it leverages requirements from the CAP report, uh, as I've said before, and I'm, I've taken up development uh, from previous students like Eric Allen, who did uh, primarily the, the work on it before. So my planned additions were to primarily make the design of the application more flexible, um, allow for the individual to really tailor the plan of study to their, uh, their uh, to the, what they want to do at RPI. So this includes allowing different, uh, different wide ranges of degrees to be uh, chosen simultaneously. So you can have minors and majors and master's programs or dual majors or whatever you want them to do uh, within the plan. Before, it really didn't allow for it. It just allowed for one single program at a time, which is kind of uh, not, not very good for usability and actually uh, hoping to get this released eventually. Um, also, the ability to change the number of semesters in the plan, that was a key thing because before it was limited to eight semesters and eight semesters only. So if you wanted to, you could just kind of not include some of the semesters and not put a thing in there, and that's really the best way of doing it before. But if you had a plan that took 10 semesters instead of eight, then you couldn't really even use RPI Planner. Um, and I wanted to add more diversity to the program by adding more current degrees um, to select from because it's very limited. It was just a test suite that he had used and completing the course database. Um, so, just to remind this is what the original interface looked like. You just have this list of courses on the left. Uh, you have the, the planning interface in the middle, uh, just a course detail panel here at the bottom, and then the degree uh, progress uh, panel on the right hand side. So this is what it looks like now, uh, and I'll get to it demo shortly, but you can see here that I've added a few buttons here to add and remove semester, um, and I've also, a lot of my work uh, has been dealing with editing the degree program panel, uh, because that allows you to add and uh, remove uh, degrees at any time. Uh, and this is, it's not exactly as easy as it looks because the entire program before was designed with just the one specific instance in mind before with eight semesters and one degree. So I really had to go through and kind of uh, reformat the entire application to be able to handle uh, mul er, uh, flexibility in changing degrees. So um, I'm gonna bring it up really quick for you. So here you can see We've got uh, this new thing here, and so new interface here. And I can add semesters, and if it gets to be too long, it'll automatically put in um, a scroll bar, and it'll allow you to scroll down, so it's always possible uh, to see what you're doing, and you can uh, get to top to bottom really easily. It's not, it's not too hard to deal with, and I can remove it just the same. And it won't allow you to go between, or below two semesters of study, because everyone at RPI must complete the last 30 credits at RPI, so you need, you need to have at least two semesters there. Um, and then for the degree programs, it's still using the limited suite, but I can add and uh, remove any, any one of the uh, degrees at any time, allowing you to uh, really customize it once, once it has a full range of, um, a full range of um, programs in, it'll allow you to fully customize what you want to do. So the drop down list would have subcategories, whether it be masters or bachelor's degrees or minors, and it'll really allow you to mix and match and do whatever you want. Also, it won't allow you to just add the same degree over and over again, so it won't allow you to do that. Um, so that's just a simple demo of what I've been working on. So, what happens to the template? The, I don't see the template. Uh, oh, I, I didn't choose one off the bat. Um, that's another thing I added is, uh, before it would require you to choose a template, um, and then it would just stick all the courses in for you. Now you don't need a template, you can't have a template, and it'll load it in. Fine. Um, if I start it up again, it'll. Let me just start the new one. Alright, so this interface, and then here. So here's the getting started panel, and right here. So this is where you would load one off the off the bat. So if I click next, it'll automatically load it and load in the template of courses. So now you don't, but you don't necessarily need to have one at the beginning. So say you don't really know what you're doing; you're just kind of exploring. Okay. It's not required; it's just I don't have to put one in. Um, so pretty much, just what I've been working on is trying to in, uh, improve the flexibility of the program um, 
and really allow it to uh, be usable by a wide range of students uh, on campus because that's who it's designed for is uh, the students on campus. So, um, so getting back to this, um, those, that's what I've implemented uh, so far. I've, I've pretty much worked out all the glitches, so I, I would say it's pretty much done. And I'm right on schedule with what I've planned. Um, but looking forward, um, I'm hoping to add at least one more major feature. Um, the, what I have in my mind uh, is that there are two main features that are still really quite necessary before this is ready to be released uh, at the minimum. And that's to complete the course database, whether it be, uh, what I'm hoping to do is writing uh, something that will grab the courses from RPI, whether it be a database or the course catalog itself, or um, writing something that would allow, you, allow to load in the degree programs, um, something that would not require a hard coding of all the courses or all the degrees, because as you can see, there's only five degrees in there, so it's not really useful right now. And there's only like probably half the courses in the course catalog are in there right now. Um, but I was hoping to maybe get a little bit of input from you guys. What what kind of things do you think would be necessary if uh, for it to be usable and releasable to the RPI student body? Like, is there anything that you guys can think of that uh, I might be? Yeah, you could uh, scrape the courses from uh, the way RPI scheduler does. Okay. That way, you always have all the courses. Right. I'll look into that then. Because I. Yeah. So, but the RPI scheduler has only the current uh, current semester, right? Um, yes, I think. Yeah. So, in the, if, the, all the course database you can talk to the registrar. Registrar yeah. usually is receptive. If you go through the registrar, or I can make you make connections to some other people. They are okay. receptive, receptive to students doing the project. Okay. Yeah, at least let me make an exploration. Yes, yeah. Um, so that's one of the major things. Is really the only two things I could think of that were necessary at this point are filling out the course database and filling out the pretty much the degree database that allows you to actually do everything in the program and not just have a very limited test um, thing. So I just had a quick schedule left. Is that is uh, putting in the course catalog uh, parser is what I call that, and then possibly additional flexibility slash usability. Yep. Any questions? Suggestions? Yeah. So you went and said drop course here in your main inter interface. You were referring yeah. to dragging and dropping from the yeah. side there, right? Yeah, you can drag <laughs> from the side. Is that necessarily the best like, choice of words to get the drop course as sort of its own domain specific meaning? <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Yeah. And just uh, that was, that was, that was no, something from the previous thing, so maybe, maybe yeah. that'd be something to uh, look into changing real quick. Just thought, uh, just an edge case, you might want to consider, you probably can't do anything about this. Mm -hmm. um, be aware that courses change over time. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, in, in the last few years, like probability went from being a 4,000 level 4 credit course to being a 2,000 level 3 credit course. Uh, signals and systems went from 4 credits to 3. DSA, as everybody knows here, got yeah. renamed to algorithms and stuff like that. So just. That may yeah. mess with people's schedules a little bit if they're doing a, a course of study. They do a pretty good job of, you know, for people who started in a, in a given year, of right. being able to fill it out there. But if people take leave of absence and things like that, sometimes it sort of gets the rug pulled out from under them. That's true. That's uh, probably something that only the advisor can fix when you might want to have something like a flag or whatever. Yeah. There might, there might be a way to put in something where you could just, like, you could modify a course. Yeah. And, then, and instead of removing one and then adding a new one, it would just modify the old one. Yeah, that's right. That would handle special cases like to, that. Uh, to go in and handle right. weird. That might, that might be an interesting thing to do. Right. Yeah. So something I'm trying to do is major in computer science and economics, which is a very strange dual combination with no overlap whatsoever. Um, and so each semester, I basically create a new spreadsheet because I've lost my old spreadsheet, I'm trying to figure out exactly how the two mesh together. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess, is, are you going to have the flexibility um, to allow I guess, arbitrary combinations of majors or just kind of pre-selected majors that you already have templates for? Um, it should allow for arbitrary ones. Uh, because, like, if if you load up two things, it'll have like the hash requirement in both, but they'll both be satisfied. And they'll merge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, it'll the requirement's still under both, but it'll satisfy both when you put one in. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really it really does kind of do it itself. And the fact, like, if you have comp sci and ECSE, for for instance, like computer systems, they have a couple courses that overlap. So if you put in a course, it'll say, hey, that course is in there, and it'll satisfy it for both. Major, so that really handles the dual uh, pretty well. Yeah. Uh, how do you plan on handling things like I think it's called a special interest concentration in IT, 
where you basically submit your own plan of study other yeah. than the core um, IT courses? There's already an uh, interface in place to add a user-specified course. So it could be possible to extend that to be a user-specified kind of degree program where you just kind of specify, here's the requirements for this, and here's what it's called, and then it would just add it to the degree, degree list, and you could put it in yourself, maybe. I, might, I, could, I could look into that as well. OK. That's, that's a good point. Thanks. All right.